Hi, my name is Liz Hathaway and this is my astrological look at the week ahead. And that's the week starting Monday, November the 11th, 2019. So it's quite an astronomical event taking place today. We have the passage of Mercury across the face of the sun, which should be visible actually in Amsterdam today as well, but it probably won't be because it's very overcast here. Um, but you never know your luck. It is visible across Europe and that would be this afternoon and it's visible in the US in the um, early hours, I think, of, um, let me see, in, in America it's um, in the morning. Here it's starting in Amsterdam from 13.35, that would be 12.35 in London and it goes on until 16.54 in the Netherlands in Amsterdam. So yeah, it's quite, a, it's quite an event because these um, conjunctions of the Sun and Mercury are always important. We talk about them, Mercury being in Kazemi, Mercury being in the heart of the Sun. So it's a sort of powerful message to the self, if you like, you know, the Sun being the symbol of the center. And Mercury is the now, the consort of the sun, it's always close to the sun, but right at the moment, it has the very ear of the sun. So, and it's a Scorpio season as well. So Scorpio always wants to um, expose things, brings things to light, doesn't it? Which is why some people feel uncomfortable with Scorpios, because they can really sort of smell um, when things aren't right, and they can be quite persistent in wanting to, you know, uncover what's behind, what's hidden. So at this point in the cycle of Sun Mercury, we can actually, not only is Mercury in Kazemi, but we're actually having a sort of almost an extra layer of Scorpio, if you like, because we've got this element of real visibility, really being able to see things. So I quite like that. Um, yeah, so it's about bringing things to light, as I said, uncover, examine, transform, transmutate, trans dance almost you could say as well. There's a kind of a dance here between the sun and Mercury. We could also say thinking trans dance it's about embracing other states of consciousness. For example last night I had a very lucid dream and Neptune is very much in the picture this week. I mean Neptune is um, trine Mercury this week which is uh, has this passage now today and it's also square Neptune. So um, a Venus, sorry, is square Neptune. So we have Mercury trying Neptune, Venus square Neptune this week. So Neptune is in the picture. So this could be indeed opening ourselves up to other sources of intelligence, other sources of knowledge, other ways of knowing. Um, so it's about, yeah, as I say, embracing other states of consciousness. It's about sight. It's about visibility. It's about seeing. It's about getting to the heart of the matter. And it's a kind of, you know, the idea as well, because we're coming into um, full moon. The full moon is exactly one day after this um, unusual Mercury transit across the face of the sun when we see Mercury clearly. Then this is on the back, then the next day we have this wonderful full moon with the moon in Taurus, which is very much a, a sort of stable place for the moon. The moon in Taurus can hold the intensity of Scorpio. It can stabilise all the emotional tumult that often, you know, accompanies Scorpio. So it's this balancing factor. But again, there's the sense with the sun-moon opposition of illumination, I was thinking this morning when I was walking the dog, it always fascinates me how in days before we had street lights and things, you know, that showed us the way on a dark night, we used to plan our meetings in the village halls and things to coincide with the full moon because there is this sense with the full moon of what is dark as well being illuminated. So there's a sort of this full moon coming a day after the Mercury passage it seems to me to emphasize this element of taking a look at things, examining things, you know, um, bringing things to light, transforming them. Because anything that is buried, that is buried in unconsciousness, 
has no opportunity to grow anymore. It sort of stagnates. It's, it sort of becomes frozen in time almost. So be aware of your dreams or do, you know, some exercises in, you know, just write, writing things down in a sort of stream of consciousness that you don't take the pen off the paper and just, you know, and then read it afterwards. Just do it for five minutes or something and think about what Mercury, what the sun, what these things mean to you personally, what, what, see what comes up, see what reveals itself to you. Because we can be opening to other um, ways of knowing, in a sense. So yeah, that full moon is great. Uh, and the full moon as well, of course, it's, a, it's a one, in one way it's an opposition, so it's a sort of a face-off, it's a crisis, it's bringing things to a head, you know, it's a sort of maximum distance between two bodies, the um, opposition. But it's also a moment of balance, it's also a moment of adjustment, it's also a moment of centering, you know, coming to the center, finding your feet, it's certainly moon in Taurus, grounding the energy, grounding the emotions. And there's a lot of work we can do this week because we have, you know, on the day of that full moon, Mars is sextile Jupiter. You know, so there's a sense there with Jupiter in Sagittarius as well, Mars ruling that Scorpio sun, of course, of um, through our actions, we can also learn about ourselves, learn about our deeper motives you know, understand ourselves better. It's a real sort of self-understanding theme, I think, around the first half of this week for sure. Because when we get into Wednesday, we have Mercury sextile in Saturn, which is, again, speaking your truth. Sun sextile um, Pluto as well. So we get into the nitty gritty. We get into the heart of it. And with Mercury also trying in Neptune on the same day on Wednesday, there is something inspirational in the start of this week. There's an, an, an essence of sort of being regenerated, renewing ourselves. And also with Neptune, always this idea of grace and kindness and benevolence and feeding ourselves and encouraging ourselves and using words in the sense of empowering us, empowering us to do things. We should be very mindful, I think, this week of where our own thought patterns are being destructive, where they're undermining our process as opposed to helping us further along our path. And so sort of Mars um, and Jupiter um, is also um, kind of, you know, Mars always is a planet that can create breakthroughs, that has that energy to push things forward. And Jupiter is definitely the higher vision that we have. So where is our thinking sort of um, damaging our higher um, uh, goals, if you like? How can we reshape our mind? Because Mercury will go direct next week. What can we pick up? What can we take with us that helps us on one level understand ourselves deeply, but on another level to take that self-understanding and transmute it, transform it, and go further with our pain, if you like. Because when we get to Thursday, we have the Venus-Neptune square, which, you know, also to me sort of suggests that sometimes seeing the truth can be painful, you know? The sort of things that we are sort of accessing on the beginning of this week can take us to a place where we are aware of our failures, where we are aware of our weaknesses, where we are aware of our, where we are damaged maybe in some way through our life experience. And that's very much Venus, Neptune. It's that sense of there's some pain involved here. So seeing the truth, I think, which is the theme of the first part of this week, it's, it can be painful. But again, I would say we must return to this theme of the full moon and let that carry us through, you know, the full moon in Taurus this week that sense of being centred in our pain and owning it, because only then can we um, overcome it and move forward. Friday, this um, we kind of almost bounce back, you know, with this beautiful moon in Cancer coming through. And the moon in Cancer's aspects right the way through, you know, Saturday and Sunday are pretty amazing, really. We have the moon Uranus sextile. We have the um, conjunction with the North Node. We have the trine with Neptune. Again, there's that slight element 
of pain that we have to reconcile ourselves with or uncomfort, discomfort perhaps with elements of our past, with elements of our journey. We have the moon Saturn opposition, which is a moment as well of sobriety, a moment of seriousness, a moment of, um, yeah, of, of, of acknowledging um, certain parts of our journey, our life journey, our heritage, our, certainly with the nodes as well in Cancer Capricorn. It's about our what we've inherited through the family line, you know, the conditioning we've been given. But then on Sunday, we have a wonderful sun trine moon, which is all very watery, which is all very much water, has this ability to absorb and cleanse. And then the moon uh, square Mars has a final aspect this week, which could be severing an attachment here, cutting ties with the past. Through awareness sometimes, we have this grace, accepting the pain of things and sometimes breaking and moving on. But I really, really like this week. It seems like it's a constant search for balance in a way, but also there's a lot of understanding and compassion and grace running through the week. Thank you for listening. Have a great week.